sind auf dem Betrieb. We are here on the farm of Suzanne and Joss. Ein toller Weidebetrieb. A very nice pasture farm that is very strong in terms of pasture management. Wir haben Fall Our farm is set up for fully grazing our dairy herd with seasonal calving. We have a herd of Kiwi Cross on just over 30 hectares. In this video, we would like to show you how we manage these pastures so that the cows have good grass throughout the growing season. Our system works as follows. Our cows calve between February and March. As soon as conditions allow, we start turning out the cows to pasture. Usually, this is at the beginning of March. To start, they are only grazing for half a day. Then, depending on the growth of the grass, the amount of grazing time can be increased. Early April, the cows are out on pasture day and night. From this time on, they will receive no more conserved feed. We are here on one of our 30 paddocks. In fact, we have a rotational pasture. The aim of rotational grazing is to have the cows on high quality grass every day if possible. Then they move on and the grazed paddock is left to regrow. The duration of the breaks depend on the growth rate of the grass. During most of the growing season, it is roughly three weeks. However, we do not manage according to the number of days or hours, but rely exclusively on the growth of the grass. To do this, we walk across the pastures every week and measure the grass height. This way, we can identify where the grass is already too long, pastures we should skip, or those which we should conserve. In this way, we ensure that the cows always come to a paddock where they eat all of the grass. In a way, kommt, wo das Gras wirklich so ist, dass die Kühe am besten angefressen. Gräser machen im Prinzip, also vor allem das englische Reigras. Perennial Reigras grows three leaves. When the fourth leaf appears, the first leaf decomposes. We do not want decomposed leaves in our pastures. So, you should let the cows in to graze before this decomposition process starts, meaning in the three-leaf stage. This is a rising plate meter. With this device, we measure the grass height. It has a rod here, which is divided into half-centimeter units. Depending on the amount of grass, the plate floats to the measurement height. This is how the grass height can be measured or dry matter estimated. Thanks to a specific software program, we can analyze the data on a weekly basis. This way, I can calculate the grass supply and determine whether there is a surplus or a shortage of grass. The aim of all of this is to avoid having grass stalks that become too old, which are then no longer tasty and will not be well eaten by the cows. You want the cows to clean out all the grass without any leftovers. Suzanne and Joss are perhaps among the best that I know when it comes to grass management. A simplified way of measuring is to place a mark on the boots. At this level I turn the cows out into the pasture, and at this level I take them off. That would be a simplification of what they do here. The paddock size for our 60 cows is between 40 and 70 heirs, depending on how the parceling allows. This is why we are flexible to move fences every day, according to the pasture conditions. Good fencing material makes it easier to adapt the areas according to the needs. You have to put in the effort, but it's worth it. It is also a pleasant job. For us,
grass, it is also important to have good quality grass throughout the season. You have to trust the grass and don't react at the first sign thinking that you have to add concentrated feeds. We have not used concentrated feeds for the cows for years now. In our experience, the less concentrated feed you give the cows, the better they eat the grass in the pasture. The less residue there is, the less old grass there is, the better the next round of grass will be. So it's like the opposite of a vicious cycle. Good grass encourages good grass to grow. Supplementary feeding hinders this process. It also helps that the cows have genetics that are ideal for grazing. We have a Kiwi cross herd, which is a cross between New Zealand Jersey and Holstein. This breed does very well without concentrated feed. They maintain a good condition and eat grass down to a very low level. Adapted cows are an important point in pasture management. The annual average milk yield of our herd is about 6,300 kilograms. The milk content is quite good due to the Jersey component, 4.7% fat and 3.7% protein. This represents a standardized milk quantity of approximately 6,700 kilograms. We have been doing all grass and seasonal calving for 20 years now. To start with, we were fascinated by the low-cost system in which one can achieve a good income with less output but with a lot of grazing. It also does well in terms of work efficiency. Ten years ago, we converted to organic production, which is very compatible with our system. Looking back, we now ask ourselves, why didn't we convert earlier? It works perfectly with our system. Two points to watch out for. In spring and autumn, bloat can be a problem and needs to be managed. If you know that the grass has grown quickly and is particularly digestible, you have to check the cows one and a half hours after turnout. The second point concerns the supply of magnesium, especially in spring and possibly also in autumn. Levels are low. When it comes to grazing, you should start early with the calves because if you don't learn when you're young, you'll never learn. These calves here were born at the beginning of February. We quickly get them out to pasture. Since the beginning of March, they go out to pasture during the day. It is important to check their parasite infection level. If necessary, we take fecal samples to decide whether we need to treat them for worms. We keep the calves here until they have been weaned, so until mid-May. They are then sent to a rearing farm in the mountainous area. This is the pasture shelter for the calves. It is very comfortable for the animals. Then, once the calves are 100% on pasture, I'll plant tomatoes, eggplants, peppers in this area, and these vegetables grow beautifully here. It is important to have a good infrastructure for good pasture management. With intensive rotational pasturing, you certainly need to invest in good walkways. Secondly, you have to invest in good fencing material. This is the only way to make fencing enjoyable. And, you should also invest in grass measuring equipment, so that you can train your eye. 
dass man äh, sich mit Berufskollegen austauscht. Exchanging man, with professional colleagues is also crucial. Continued training, in order to further develop one's own system. A good network is also one of the success factors. BioSwiss bietet über das Beratungsangebot ProBio. Through its ProBio Consulting Service, BioSwiss offers pasture visits but also study groups, where farm managers can learn from other farmers, such as here from Suzanne and Joss. This allows them to improve their own pasture management system. Etwas, was mich gerne wieder fasziniert und mir Freude macht. Something that always fascinates me and gives me great pleasure is the magical relationship between the soil, grass and cows. This balance is established when you adjust the management. When you observe the grass growth well and make the right decisions from this. This really makes grazing a pleasure. The cows, the grass and the job are a real joy. Das Gras macht Freude, der Beruf macht Freude.